What's up everybody? It's Andrew from Apex Cards. Yep, another video this week. I'm getting back into the swing of things, boys. Um, got an interesting one for you today. Oh yeah, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I try to produce uh, fairly interesting card-related content, mainly about buying and selling cards and collections. Um, and today we're going to talk about flea malls. So I don't know if, if flea malls are a common thing. Um, I believe they are. They're definitely a common thing in the southeast United States um, because they're a dime a dozen around here. And uh, if you don't know what a flea mall is, basically it's it's usually a big building. It's like kind of like an antique store, except that uh, the stuff that is for sale in the antique store or in the flea mall uh, is divided up into these booths. And these booths can be rented by... Uh, individuals such as myself such as yourself such as whoever and um, they'll be packed full of little tchotchkes and furniture and all types of stuff um, and in some cases uh, flea malls have these locked showcases which is what I've got here on the screen and I've got a little video here for you that I that I filmed um, and I'm gonna turn down the volume on the video because they're playing the red hot chili peppers by the way uh, in case you're curious and um, this is my flea mall booth and I've actually got two of them my flea mall showcase um, and uh, let me show you here a little more about the flea mall let's go to this browser here so the flea mall that I sell at is called the Bama flea mall a uh, real creative name it's in Alabama obviously and um, you know here is an example let's look at this little video here so this is like a, some booth that they filmed back in November of 21 um, but the booths are these little, I don't know, 15 by 15 foot squares that they've, they've carved up. Um, our flea mall, I think, was an old Walmart um, that, that this company has taken over and divided into little 15 by 15 squares and put in the showcases and whatever. And the way that it works is that you can basically sell anything um, in your booth that you want. You'll see here, I'll show you some other booths that are uh, selling in this flea mall. Like you can see this person over here is selling purses and you know probably fake purses let's be honest fake purses and uh, fake sunglasses bunch of fake stuff so you know whatever not my problem and then this person over here is also selling these action figures and we'll get into that as well um, and, I, and I film a pretty big portion of this showcase area um, here in this flea mall but this is me dealer 917 and um, as you can see I've got a, a bit of sealed wax here on the top shelf I've got a, a shelf of singles I've got uh, a bunch of uh, sets and random you know bulk in jewel cases here I've got some Pokemon down here and I've got some uh, sealed wax as well so um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about this uh, this specific hustle the flea mall hustle and um, tell you how much money I make and uh, show you all that I can about this this uh, this situation here so um, this booth here, or this uh, showcase rather, cost I believe $55 a month to rent, and I have two of them, so I pay $110 per month. And then as your stuff sells, there is a fee. There's a 10% sales fee, so you got to pay the $55 bucks plus 10% of, of your sales. And by the way, it didn't used to be 10%. They raised that on us randomly. Um, I've been here about a year, but for the first, I don't know, three or four months that I was here, it was a 5% fee, which was incredibly low it was the lowest in our area and this this uh, flea mall happens to be kind of near my near my home so it's very convenient for me to pop over here and fill up these cases and, and take a look at things um, so let's let's watch this video a bit because I um I spent some time here um, filming the showcase and you can see here's my bottom couple two bottom shelves got a lot of sealed wax um, here's some sealed basketball some sealed football here um, some random Dragon Ball Z VH uh, Dragon Ball Z VHS's that uh, I got in the storage locker find some ornaments these are <laughs> Magic Johnson ornaments just random stuff like here's some sport flicks down here sport flicks box which believe it or not will sell here's some random other sealed stuff and you know some beanie babies that were that I found you know and stuck in here uh, also some supplies that sell by the way supplies sell pretty well I'm out of penny sleeves there used to be a bunch of penny sleeves in here but they sell pretty well need to stock those back up um, but this is is my uh, showcase I would guess it's about six foot tall and I don't know three feet wide and I've got one two three four five shelves in here um, that I can configure any any which way that I like and here's my neighbor here this guy does really well 
He's selling all action figures. He has, I believe, six showcases. You'll see he's got this one here that I'm filming. Um, and then he's got this one beside it. You know, he is a toy guy. He sells these. Look at that job of the hut right there. That's pretty cool. He sells these, uh, these action figures that he gets from God knows where. But he has hundreds and hundreds of them, as you'll, as you'll see. This is two of his showcases here. Um, and I happen to know that he does really well because I go to the front desk girl and say, Hey. Who's selling the most stuff? Because I'm, you know, I'm competitive, and I, I gotta know. And this guy, I think he kicks my ass every month. He, he does a lot of stuff, but he's got a lot more showcases, and, and he's been in the game a little bit longer than me. Um, so anyway, let's keep looking here. So he's got a lot of vintage collectibles and toys, whatever. For some reason, I decided to film my booth again. Try to get a little close-up shot. Got some graded stuff in there. Got some singles. Sometimes a single sell. You, 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 you never really know. But this, this is a good way to get yourself a retail location um, in your local area. If you've... Uh, here's an empty booth, by the way. I considered renting this, but do I really need three booths? You know, I don't, I don't think so. It'd be, you know, another 55 bucks a month. And um, anyway, I'll let someone else take it. Probably the toy guy will, uh, will rent it. He was real butthurt that I took that booth beside his, he wanted to rent that one beside his toys there, but, but I got it. That one's towards kind of the, a busy aisle, so it was a pretty premium spot. This one's kind of tucked more in the back. Um, you'll see here, here's a Funko Pop guy. He seems to do decent, you know, I, I kind of keep an eye on, on everyone that's in here. This here is a, uh, showcase of books. Now this happens to be the, uh, action figure guy. This is his booth as well. But he's got books in this one and a couple of action figures down there. But um, he sells some other stuff as well. He sells a lot of media. Um, and then here is my other booth. I'm, again, Dealer 917. So this was the first one that I rented. Damn boy, looking good right there. Um, and as you can see, I've got a lot of sealed product in here. Bowman University. I've got these uh, Bowman Blasters. Um, you know, and where do I get the sealed product? No, I'm not the guy in Walmart raking the, all of the Walmart wax into the buggy. I buy these secondhand via eBay, via lots. Um, so all the sealed wax that you see here, except for these hobby boxes, which I bought from a, a distributor, come from uh, eBay. I just go on eBay. I know what sells pretty well in my area. Like these Bowman U boxes are real hot. Um, I've got them slightly marked up. I'm selling them for $23.99, whereas I think Walmart sells them for $21.99. Um, and then I've got some of these uh, Michael Jordan lockers down here. This is sealed wax back from the 90s. Um, some more singles in here. Look, there's a Jeter rookie right there. The random uh, baseball ba wax box there. Um, I've got some of these. Uh, I made some junk wax boxes that people like to buy. Those sell pretty well, which is just 12 packs of junk wax. Um, let's back this up a little bit. 12 packs of junk wax. I've got, uh, let's see, looks like football, basketball, and hockey there. Those sell well. And, uh, this dude, so this guy, he sells like these transformers and stuff. And I don't know how well he does, but he used to have this really huge one in there that was for like three or four hundred bucks, and it's now gone. So I assume somebody bought that, so looks like they sell okay as well. Here's like someone selling more traditional stuff, more kind of antiques. Looks like, um, you know, jewelry, um, you know, tchotchkes and BS, you know, whatever. Let's see what else we can see here in this video. Um, oh, yeah. This this is a doll booth. A guy runs this booth. <laughs> a dude. So he's into collecting Barbies, I guess. Or maybe not uh, collecting Barbies, but at least selling Barbies. But I was very surprised. I happened to be there uh, refilling my booth. I just figured, you know, it's like a little old lady uh, runs his booth. Wrong. It was a dude uh, about my age, 35, selling these Barbies. But hey, I'm not going to hate on the Barbie hustle. He seems to be doing quite well. He's doing running a little 50% off sale. You can do that, by the way. You can run a sale. Uh, you just kind of let the front desk know that your booth is on sale. And, of course, when someone uh, comes and buys something, they know to mark it down 50%. So that's kind of a selling strategy. This again, here's a media booth right here. This is, I believe this is the um, uh, the action figure guy. This is one of his booths. So I think we've seen four of his booths. Uh, yeah, 216, I believe is him. And then here we go. Here's a guy selling like a uh, fake, I don't know if these are real, let's be honest. Um, these are like, you know, Super Nintendo, mini Super Nintendos. I don't know where he's getting these or what's going on there, but probably some Chinese stuff that he's imported. And, and these are not 
Beats by Dre or Apple headphones. They just kind of look like it. They're like off-brand headphones. So, um, you know, here's someone selling knives and feminine products and razors and, you know, who knows where people are getting these things. Here's another, oh, here's Toy Guy again. That's another one of his booths. I filmed this one as well. This guy, um, he he does these signing events where he takes all these helmets you know we're in Alabama so obviously Alabama stuff sells well so he does these signing events where they pay Alabama players to come sign helmets and cards and whatever else look he's got some PSA graded stuff here these are like autographed cards I believe yeah some autographed PSA cards they're just uh, DNA authentic is what these are um, which is kinda cool so not, not really a threat to me. I'm really the only card seller in the in the entire store. Um, here's a guy selling like what turkey calls and um, you know sunglasses and I mean anything that you want to sell you can put in this booth, right? Um, uh oh, I restarted the video there by accident. Let's see, or was that the end? Okay, yeah. So that that's the end of the video. So uh, Let's talk a little bit more about this, and then I'll show you how much money I've made um, over the past, you know, eight, eight, eight or nine months that I've been doing this. So, um, there are flea malls everywhere in Alabama, and this one is particularly good because, it, for one, it's right off I-20, which is a very popular interstate, a very well-traveled interstate between Atlanta and uh, Birmingham. Um, so they get a lot of traffic in here, and more importantly, they have the lot showcases. Not all uh, flea malls will have these lot showcases, but if you're going to be selling high dollar stuff, especially like sealed wax, you you need a uh, you need a lot showcase because people will just come in here and steal your stuff. I mean, theft happens, right? But you can almost completely eliminate theft if you have um, um, these locked showcases like this, which is the way to go, in my opinion. So. You put all your stuff in here when somebody wants to buy something they have to go to the front desk and say hey um, uh, I'd like to get something out of this booth and then they come through with a key unlock it hand them the thing walk them to the front and then then they purchase their item so you, almost no chance of theft unless um, yeah I mean no chance of theft basically so uh, yeah is this like a huge money-making portion of my operation you know it's not but it does help me get rid of some stuff that would be tougher to sell. For example, you know, some of this uh, sealed, these little sealed hockey things here, they're heavy, hard to ship, and they're only worth about five bucks a piece, so they're easy to move in a setting like this. Same with these little uh, upper deck football boxes here. Um, and it just kind of gives you another outlet um, to, to sell stuff. So um, I happen to know that the number one seller in this thrift store does around 16,000 sorry not thrift store but flea mall does around sixteen thousand dollars per month now this was a couple of months ago when they told me that um, but he had he's got actual booths and these are again showcases not booths and um, you know he's got the 15 by 15 booth I think he maybe he has eight or ten of them and it's all furniture I believe he's a guy who does like house cleanouts and and whatnot so um, he's getting his product almost for free and he's just selling all types of antiques and furniture and very annoying stuff and I think it's his full-time job he's probably got a booth at multiple flea malls uh, throughout the city um, so anyway let's talk a little bit about uh, the finances here so he now not all flea malls have this ridiculous looking uh, accounting system but mine does and I it, as ridiculous as it looks I'm very thankful for it um, because it allows me to, without going to the flea mall, to see what has sold. So our store is 692, I'm dealer number 917, and then you just put in your password, and it will log you in. And so in this billing cycle, which is only about three days, I've made $97 so far. Because um, I think it resets on the 20, uh, 27th or 26th of the month. Um, so we've done okay so let's go let's go right here and see uh, current sales so as you can see yeah so it actually resets on the 25th so the 26th is the first new day so I've sold a Pokemon Battle Styles box for 40 bucks a James Harden card uh, some other sports card they don't always do a good good job of putting in the item description but uh, I sold uh, four bags 
So this is going to be uh, um, this is going to be penny sleeves here. So I made like a dollar eighty, and then these are going to be uh, team bags. I made two bucks a pop on those, so we netted three sixty. Again, they take a ten percent fee. I sold a thing of top loaders for five bucks. Um, you know, which I'm just buying in bulk anyway, right? Might as well put them in there. And then uh, this is a top series one box that sold for forty nine ninety nine, and that's where we. Uh, and then here's a clear card. This is another clear card holder. I guess that's going to be penny sleeves as well for one dollar. So here are the sales that I've made um, in the last what four days, which is not bad. You know, hundred bucks in four days, doing pretty well. Um, and so we've got a sales history. You can see that there are a, are a ton of sales that I've made. Um, what is this? What well, takes me back to six? Yeah, it takes to three thirty-one. Okay, so it doesn't go back that far. Um, but let's go to settlements. So settlements is is the actual checks that I've been that I get from these folks. And so my very first check uh, <laughs> looks like it was August and September of twenty-one. I made a thousand dollars that month. Um, we got a check for a thousand twenty-two. Uh, looks like here the next month we got a check. Yeah, here's here's where they uh, increased the fee. It looks like uh, they handle tax and everything. They remit tax, so not a big deal. But we sold thirty-six items for a thousand bucks. Got a check for nine oh three. Here's my best month ever, which was Christmas. I'm sorry, it was um, it was actually not Christmas. It was November. Of 21, I did almost $1,500. Got a check for $1,300. Um, I had another good month right here. This is February 22, another $1,400 month. And as you can see, last month, which ended on the 25th, I did $750. And so we've already got a good start here, going into July. Um, but yeah, so this is uh, a little bit about the flea mall hustle. I don't see a ton of people posting about this, uh, mainly because old retired people do flea malls and they're not big into making YouTube videos these days but I decided to try it out I mean why not right so as you can see we've done pretty well what is this one two thirty five hundred four thousand almost five six seven you know seven eight thousand dollars in the last uh, six seven months how many is it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so ten months not bad uh, seven eight thousand dollars and uh, these months here I was not doing a good job of keeping the booth stocked um, I went ahead and made this video because I had the both booths uh, real you know stocked full of stuff uh, and I started really going hard on eBay buying the sealed wax which people like to buy around here because we, we live in one of those places where Walmart is all, always sold out still to this day um, and there's not a lot of uh, blaster boxes and mega boxes in there for you to buy so I kind of provide that service and this store is actually near our local Walmart so um, if, if you're coming in here and you like cards uh, I'm the only card seller in the store and you can buy them from me um, so anyway uh, if I had to give you if you want to try this out it's pretty cool and these flea malls have different rules but this one's very easy to work with so besides them raising the fee to 10 percent um, the monthly fee is reasonable I get a lot of room I'm never going to get stolen from right because the things are locked um, and more importantly it has this online uh, this online service which looks horrible looks very 1990s right late 90s but it works, right? It lets you see on any given day what, what you've sold. So if you come in here and you see that you've sold out of your Pokemon Battle Style boxes and you got a bunch here, you can just take some more over the next day. It's no big deal. Keeps you from having to constantly go there and see what is sold. I actually rented a booth in another town about 45 minutes from here, and the sales were good, but I, it was really inconvenient for me to go there. They didn't have an online thing. You had to call them. They'd tell you kind of what sold, how much you had sold, and you weren't sure what it was. And, um, yeah, so uh, if you're going to try this, go find a flea mall near you. Make sure that they have, um, uh, you must have locked showcases unless you're just going to let people steal from you. Um, and this is not a must. The online system is not a must, but I find it to be very convenient. Um, so yeah guys anyway let me know if you have any questions this is this is something I don't see a lot of people talking about um, but it is a viable option for selling cards you're not gonna get rich right 
not going to make 10 grand a month probably doing this, but you can do pretty well. Um, as you saw, I had a couple of $1,500 months and it combined with eBay, combined with Facebook Marketplace, combined with whatever else COMC that you're doing, um, it's another good outlet for selling cards. And, uh, you know, you just got to come in here and keep this thing as stocked as you possibly can, which um, I've, I've had some trouble doing, right? Like I'll forget about it for a little while and, um, you know, people will buy out a bunch of stuff and then it'll look kind of empty, which is not what you're, you know, what you want but uh is if you keep this thing stocked and you know i've got some room back here i could pile in some more stuff which i will do over time the main thing is to saturate not decorate that's what a experienced flea mall seller told me saturate don't decorate so this is a saturated booth um and uh another bonus of flea malls is that you're going to meet a lot of characters a lot of weird dudes in here selling uh, antiques selling dolls selling cards like me right selling action figures a bunch of 40 year old and 35 year old dudes in here selling dolls and cards i mean that's it's always a you know fairly entertaining to go here and uh see what's up so um yeah let me know if you have any questions please like and subscribe um, I can make another video about the flea mall. Probably would make sense to walk around and show you, uh, you know, the other stuff because most of the store, 95% of the store, is not these showcases, right? It's the big booths with, with lots of stuff. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe, and uh, I appreciate all of you guys. Thanks so much. Bye everyone.